Audrey, do you want to record another episode? Yeah? Are you wondering if I have more carrots? <laughs> I love you too. I love you too. Yeah. Oh. Is that the spot? Oh. Really? Oh, I can't tell where it is you want me to scratch you. <laughs> You're so funny. Do you want to get a chewy? Yeah, you want a chewy? Go get a chewy. Let's see if she brings one back. You did bring a chewy. Come on. Good girl. Look at that. You got your buffalo bone. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Oh, yeah. There goes the mega chewer. Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I am your host of this crafty video podcast here on YouTube. In this episode I want to share with you things that I've been working on, winner of a giveaway, <laughs> an announcement for the next giveaway, all while I pet my dog who's standing right next to me and really wants me to pet her. <laughs> So every month this year, I'm hosting a, a knit along with a giveaway. Uh, so the theme of each month is to knit one of the patterns that I have designed. Uh, D Heart House designs and my patterns are available on Ravelry. This knit along is hosted in Ravelry in the D Heart House podcast group. And so all you have to do is knit one of my patterns and in the month that you finish that pattern, that project, uh, you post a photo of your finished object and that counts as an entry in a drawing for a prize. So uh, this was open for the month of January. So there were three entries for the month of January and I chose a winner. So the winner for the month of January will get to pick out one of my patterns on Ravelry. So you will get one of my patterns gifted to you for free. And you will also be sent a bag. So this is a uh, canvas drawstring bag that you will receive. Comes with handles great for uh, carrying around a small project like a pair of socks. Okay, so the winner is getting a pattern prize as well as a, a physical bag sent to you in the mail. And so of the three posts, I went to random.org and said, pick a number between one and three. And random.org said number three. And that winner is Mama One Moose. So yay, Mama One Moose. I'll be getting in touch with you on Ravelry so that uh, I can gift you a pattern prize as well as the bag. So congratulations. Uh, the same type of knit along is happening for each month this year. So you can start your projects at any time. It's all about when you finish them. So if you finish a D Hard House Designs pattern in the month of February, please go post in the February thread. It is open. It's available. It's ready for you. Uh, so similar prizes will be given for the month of February. Uh, one of my patterns as well as a bag. So I've been working on one project mainly uh, and that's the baby blanket that I showed you folks last time. 
So I am now into the second skein. So I believe last time I showed this, um, I was about halfway through one of the Lion Brand Mandala Cakes. And it's, uh, the colorway is Centaur. And I was probably about halfway, I'm showing you the cast on edge. I'm holding it upside down, if you will. Uh, so I made it all the way through that one cake. So it goes from brown to like a rust color. Yes. And then a, a tan and gold and this like cream and then this uh, like a purpley blue. And so I went through one whole color sequence and then I asked you guys on Instagram, okay, I went out and bought a second cake of the same colorway, Centaur. And I wasn't sure whether I should join it so that it just stripes, so it just repeats brown, rust, um, <laughs> tan, gold, cream, and like a, a indigo color or if I should reverse it so that the color stripes are mirrored uh, and it looks like, you know, there's a middle and it's mirrored on both sides. And I asked you guys to vote and I really appreciate uh, those of you who did. Um, and so most people said to, to reverse the stripes order and make it look mirrored. So that's what I did. So, We have this going on. <laughs> Let me stand up. Okay. So, I have not finished the second ball yet, but you can see how you've got like this almost purple, it's almost purplish in the middle here. And then it's got the blue and the cream. Yeah, you're seeing it. <laughs> and I have my circular needle here. Yeah. This blanket's gonna be big. <laughs> uh, but here's the rest of the ball. So because I'm reversing the order, I'm pulling from the middle of the ball this time. On the first one, I went from the outside, and it was, so it was much more tidy. Now that I'm pulling from the inside, I'm having to be really careful about <laughs> managing this uh, yarn that's left because it, it could very easily become a tangled mess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that is the progress on the baby blanket I've put. I've put a lot into this and it looks really cool. So this is another uh, design that I am working on. So you can see it has this eyelet pattern. So it's a little lacy, but uh, oh yeah, so nice. Marjorie is sniffing the wool. <laughs> yes, she is. Um, I have bags of wool in the closet and she has found them. I did not shut the closet door. So she really wants me to um, pull out the wool so she can investigate. I am not going to do that, but she really wants me to. <laughs> she is literally begging me right now. <laughs> Marjorie had to leave the room because she could not get <laughs> sheep off the brain even after I shut the closet door so sorry Marjorie but we're not playing with the wool right now <laughs> she's very supportive so the second thing that I've been working on is a pair of socks so I have another sock design in the works and I finished the first pair and I showed them to you on the previous episode so you can go back and watch that if you haven't already. Uh, so I cast on another pair so I can see how it looks with a lighter shade of 
of yarn. <laughs> the first pair is knit on a pretty dark color. I thought I'd try something a little bit lighter and I am really liking it. The colors, I don't know if you can see, um, they're kind of pooling in a way. It looks like the colors are spiraling around, which I was not expecting. Um, I mean, I think it looks fine. It's just, I was thinking I was going to get more of a uh, variegated look rather than a pooling look. So I just didn't anticipate that from the skein. Uh, but the texture stitch is working out really well. So it's, um, I'm knitting it top down, which is my preferred method. I have two circular needles, US size one. Um, I love Magic Loop and two circular needles. That's, that's my favorite. Um, and yeah, it's just a really basic texture stitch that I'm working on. And I'm very excited to be working on this. So the yarn that I'm using is uh, Malabrigo. Malabrigo sock. So it is... Um, does it say? It's Superwash Merino Wool. Um, and the colorway is number 416. And there's the name. Indicita. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but there it is. So it's um, green and blue, like a bluish, like a violet color. It's gorgeous. Yep. I'm very green today, not on purpose. <laughs> oh. I should tell you what I'm wearing. I oftentimes forget this. I'm wearing two pieces of knitwear today. I have on a sweater, um, which I made excuse me, not, not last year, but the previous year in 2019. Uh, this is the Weekender and the pattern is uh, by Andrea Mowry. So I made it out of this beautiful uh, green tweed yarn. You, maybe you can see the tweedy bits in here. I love this sweater. It's one of my favorites. And then I'm wearing a simple boomerang shawl that I knit before that. And I do not remember the name of the dyer. Something just fell. Um, I think the colorway is Ambrosia Salad. I think it was Woolen Boon. I don't remember. I'll, I'd have to look it up on my project page, but, <laughs> uh, but it's a greenish color. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I've been working on. Honestly, uh, work is so busy. I can't, I can't do a lot. Uh, but I do want to keep you up to date on one of the big blankets that I'm working on. So I did put some progress on the big crochet quilt that I'm working on. So um, I was creating like the big blocks. And so I made two big blocks of the crochet quilt and then I attached them together. But now instead of making a big block, so a big block is made out of a bunch of squares and then a big block out of a bunch of squares. So now that I've fit them together, I'm actually just adding the squ individual squares on there. So instead of making a big block, because I have to keep referring back to the piece in order to pick out the next set of colors. So I thought, well, why not just go ahead and start attaching them on there so I know the order. So I'm going to attempt to show this to you. Aha, here we 
Here we go. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> yeah! So you can see the two big blocks. They're the two like uh, warm color. Exo is grouped by warm colors and cool colors, which is super fun. So this was a big block and this was a big block. Oh my gosh! It is the width of a queen size bed. Um, it doesn't really drape over the sides of the bed at all, which is totally fine. I will probably end up putting a border around this in the end just to give it that last bit of polished look. Um, but queen size is what I was going for, so this is great. And then I've, I've put some more squares up on this side. Um, <laughs> hard to show you but look at it looks so cool so yeah the idea is um, you make these individual squares here they're granny squares and you do on a diagonal here half in one color and the other half in another color um, but because of these um, eyelets here coming up from the corners, uh, you could see in the white, gives this illusion of even smaller squares. Look at this. It looks like that's a square because of the little dots. Right? <laughs> uh, that's, not, that's not a square that I'm crocheting. It's this whole thing. <laughs> I think it's a pretty neat. Um, so the pattern I will have linked down below in the description box. It's a free pattern. Uh, and I have a project page for this that I'm trying to keep updated. Uh, so I'm using worsted weight acrylic yarn, uh, various brands, uh, Red Heart, Karen, Bernat, those kinds of things. Um, and I think the pattern has a, a lighter weight in mind, like a sport weight. So my, my squares are bigger because I'm using thicker yarn. Um, and, and that works for what I want it for. It does make the scale of the pattern larger. So I was imagining a, a smaller scale but because I'm using thicker yarn, it is bigger, which I should have anticipated. I didn't, but I love it. I love how it's turning out. So it's a happy mistake. Um, but yeah, so the crochet quilt is coming along. I have the baby blanket. I have a multicolored mitered square blanket. Uh, I don't know where it is. That's the problem. <laughs> My guess is that it's in um, a Rubbermaid container in the garage with our camping stuff. I bet that's where it is. Because um, when we were packing to move, I think I just I threw it in one of those containers. Um, if it's not there, then I have no idea where that that thing is. It's not finished yet. <laughs> It is another blanket that's in progress, so I will need to find its location and retrieve it if I have any plans of working on it. So, um, but I mean, I have other blankets to work on. There's no immediate need for me to go out in the cold garage right now. <laughs> so I wanted to share a few little tidbits with you guys. <laughs> Um, I went to the grocery store and I wanted to treat um, my husband and I to some wine that we could enjoy on the weekend. And I found this adorable bottle with sheep on it. I wanted to share it with you. This thing is going to get, we, we drink it. <laughs> I need to wash this out, but this is going to be um, 
This is going to live in the craft room because it has sheep on it. Look at this. Sheep thrills. And they're like parachuting. He's, he's got his, you know, goggles. Glass of wine. This one too. Oh, they're so cute. Yep. There's that. And there is a sheep on the lid. It is a screw top because I'm fancy like that. Um, <laughs> there's a sheep with the wine glass on the on the cap. <laughs> um, yes. So I uh, enjoyed a glass of Sheep Thrills wine with uh, some knitting and that made for a lovely weekend. I do want to say I'm not sponsored by anyone or anything. Uh, I'm just sharing with you things that that I'm working with and things I find. Uh, I picked up this bottle of wine in my local grocery store so I'm not sure uh, how widely available it is but if you like to indulge in some wine uh, and you want to look for it in your local grocery grocery store I'd love to know where else they sell it um, I live in Washington State by the way so another thing I wanted to share with you is um, I uh, one of my two of my patterns were featured in a uh, subscription box and um, that was with uh, Naughty Knit Box and this was for the month of January and so uh, I was very graciously sent a box um, that I was featured in and I wanted to open it on the podcast so I have not opened this it is sealed. Now I I need to cover up my shipping address here with Oh, here we go. I can use this notebook. Da da. Um but I want to show you this comes from Naughty Lady Yarns out of Roseburg, Oregon, and you can find her website here naughtyladyyarns.com. And uh So this is this sock edition yeah and I love this I want a rocking chair and then boom that would be me so I'm gonna open this all right oh yeah this was on the side your naughty box is here my husband brought this in he's like oh a package he was expecting a textbook and he's like this isn't my textbook <laughs> okay what do we have all right we have tissue paper sticker squishy mail is the best mail oh lovely lovely so alexandra the art of yarn silverton ruby so this is superwash merino nylon and tensile fingering weight yarn for the sock we've got oh my gosh there's a sock ruler in here look at that that's perfect. I need one of these. Oh, okay. We have goodies, some tea, some candy. What is this? Ooh, some lavender to put in my laundry. Yes. And here they are, you guys. So these are my Studmaster socks and my Patricia socks. Oh, oh, 
that's so cool so yep the patterns are are in here how very awesome again i am not sponsored in any way but you should check out naughty lady yarns oh man very cool thank you thank you thank you it was so fun working with her okay i'm gonna have to knit some socks some more socks very exciting okay so that is all that i have for the knitting stuff the garden has also been pretty productive. So I wanna take a moment to take you outside into the chilly weather that we are having here in the Pacific Northwest. Oh my gosh, it feels so cold. Like there's a slight breeze and it just <laughs> makes it feel so much colder. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so here's my window box with my seedlings under the grow lights which is super fun right that's in the kitchen but so if we come outside it's marjorie over there sniffing something <laughs> so this bed up by the house was covered in weeds and <laughs> i harvested some worms from there uh, and then, so what I'm doing is I'm slowly taking the weeds and putting them in the compost for an influx of a lot of green into the compost. Um, cause I have these bags of leaves for brown. Uh, and then I'm putting cardboard over to, you know, get the weeds to die and that'll be a bed. I'm thinking I'll put herbs close to the house. So parsley and basil and stuff like that. Um, the garlic still the only thing that's outside right now um, it's early February still and it's just too cold in fact we have snow in the forecast and so I really can't put anything out here yet so garlic right there it's doing great um, I did put in this little bit of like plastic fencing around here to try to keep Marjorie out <laughs> And then over here, um, let's see, can I, I can't switch the camera while I'm recording. Um, so here is compost. <laughs> That's two bags of compost, two cubic feet of compost. Um, the rest is all just leaves, those bags of leaves that I have. Um, because I can't find compost in the store right now. So, and my compost pile is, you know, still working on itself. It's not ready to be used. So I just went ahead and covered it up with the leaves. So I've got cardboard down and then the leaves. So when I do get compost, it'll just go on top. Here comes that breeze making me feel really cold. <laughs> I wonder what the wind chill really is. They come over here on the side. First of all, my neighbor has a fantastic garden going over there. <laughs> oh, hello, Marjorie. She has brought us a toy. <laughs> um, so this is um, cabbage, if I remember correctly. So we'll see if that grows. That was planted last year. I've got radishes around here that are doing pretty well. Kale in the middle, it's kind of, I mean, all this really got stunted. Um, these are carrots, they're not really doing anything. But why tear them up? I might as well see if they grow. And this is more kale. Just really weak, limpy. But I tore up all the weeds on the outer edge of the plastic and put it in the compost, so. Yeah, we're getting there. Once we get past this cooler weather, the, the frost and snow that's in the forecast, um, I'm definitely thinking about bringing some of my seedlings out here. So 
So here's my new planted stuff under the grow lights. These are some of these were sewn today, so there's nothing, <laughs> nothing popping up. There's a few onions back there. But the ones that do have growth, I had to move. Like there's no space left under these lights. So I moved them to the other window. So here's the, the seedlings I have sprouted. So I've got onions here. This is kale. Three kale came up. This fourth one hasn't come up. This, these are radishes. And cabbage. And all the broccoli came up. Oh yeah. So they're over here under this other grow light. It got really chilly out there with the wind. So I have, I have big plans for the garden. Um, I'm really hoping to grow a lot of food this year. I have so much more space than last year and I really want to just capitalize on it. <laughs> um, so I have um, onions, kale, broccoli, cabbage, and radishes that you saw. Um, those are ones that have sprouted. I've also planted seeds for um, not the, the cool weather crops, right? Like the salad greens. I've got lettuce, spinach, arugula. I've got broccoli, kale, cabbage, cauliflower. Um, I've got the onions, um, three varieties of onions. Uh, the garlic's already outside, right? I put that in in the fall, um, which I think I'll do next year with the onions, right? Uh, but uh, when we moved in here in the fall, I didn't have onion seeds, so I couldn't even have done that. <laughs> this year I will. Um, I put in uh, tomatoes and peppers. I got those planted because they'll need time to grow indoors before I can move them outside. So those have been started. Um, I've got all kinds of things in the window box. It's very exciting. Um, right now I'm a little like why won't you grow? My garden's gonna be so tiny, you guys aren't growing. Um, but I do remember last year thinking, um, there's no way these plants are gonna be that big. And then I got so many zucchini, I got so many tomatoes, got a lot of garlic. Um, so th things will grow, I just need to be patient. But uh, yeah, so. There's a lot going on in the DeHart house, and um, I'm excited to show you our journey as we grow our own food, and I make our own clothes, and my husband makes our furniture. So thank you for joining me for this episode. Um, don't forget to join in the monthly knit alongs. Just knit any of DeHart house designs patterns, and the month in which you finish that item is where you'll post it and be eligible for prizes. So thank you for watching and uh, I can't wait to see you next time. Take care, be safe, and enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. Bye.